Hey, what's up guys? Rarina here and today is automatic transmission fluid drain and fill day. The drain and fill for transmission is not so different from a drain and fill from engine oil, except that you just want to make sure that your car is level and that your transmission is hot when you check the final level of the fluid. You want to make sure that fluid is at the operational expanded volume when you check it, just like when your car is running. Now this procedure should be done about every 30,000 miles and it's important that you do this because there is a lifetime filter inside your transmission and if that gets clogged you have to pull the whole transmission out that's not something that i can typically do in my garage probably not something that you can do there so to save some bucks do the drain and fill every 30,000 miles i'm going to show you the steps on how to do that as well as the materials so let's get started tools and materials needed to get this done include five quarts motorcraft mercon lv trans fluid a long funnel paper towels or rags a 7 16 socket for your drain plug a T30 Torx or 10 mm Allen key for your level plug, or a 14 mm socket if yours is a hex plug, a large minimum 5 quart drain pan, floor jack and jack stands or factory scissor jack, any extensions or driver extensions, a tire lug nut wrench, and a tape measure or measuring device. Step 1 is making sure that your escape is level, whether on the ground or raised up on jack stands. It's also important that your transmission and engine are cool for safely draining fluid. You can use jack stands throughout this whole procedure if you'd like, but you don't have to. I made this video over two different transmission fluid changes, so there's some footage with and without. Step 2 is removing your under engine splash shield. This is an aftermarket shield, but your OEM or factory shield is the same. Alright, so once you have the shield out, for a location of where the drain plug is, I am closest to the driver's side wheel, right here, and looking up, this 7 16 plug is right here. Now I have my drain pan positioned right underneath it and I'm going to take my 7 16 socket I'm going to break this guy free and you should start to see some fluid drain out. The cap at the top is a vent plug so it doesn't create vacuum so you can start taking this out. You will get some on your hands so it's important that this fluid is cold. This may take a few minutes, so just be patient. So people may talk about a vent cap or a fill port on our escapes. They are the same thing. On my 13 1.6 liter escape, it's located between the engine and the air box, pointing to it with this pencil here. My cap is kind of gunked up, but you should see yellow text that says Mercon LV with a yellow arrow on it. It's a vent cap, so this is all it looks like. There's no seal. There's the cavities in the top so that air can escape. Just pull that off, put it in a safe place. Take your funnel. We're going to stick it right down in there. So I'm not sure if you could tell or not, but I had a fluid leak from this drain plug in my transmission, so it's pretty wet under there. I've cleaned off the threads and I'm adding some threading compound that will only be on the lower thread so none of it enters the transmission. This compound is good for up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and our transmissions only get up to the low 220s. As you can see, the fluid has turned to a drip at the drain port. Wipe off any excess and prepare to install your newly coated plug. Do it by hand to get a good feel to make sure the threads are engaging smoothly. And then take a 7 16 socket or wrench and tighten it down to 106 inch pounds, which is only 8.8 .8 pounds of torque. That's really not that much. So basically put your hand right over top of the bolt and lightly turn it. You should be good to go. Wipe off any excess once more, clean up the area, and remove your drain pan. Now let's refill our transmission with 5 quarts of Mercon LV transmission fluid. By holding the bottle this way when you're putting fluid back in, it ensures a steady stream because it allows air to come back in and you don't have fluid burping out of the bottle. This will be a lot smoother going into your funnel as well, and it will make less mess. Remove your fill funnel and reinstall your vented fill cap. Plug is back in place. Just make sure it's in there firm. To warm up your engine and transmission, go for a brief drive. When you come back, 
put your vehicle in park, have your foot on the brake, and then shift from park to reverse to neutral to drive and then back to park. Do all of this before doing your level plug. All right, the engine and transmission are up to operating temperature. I am now going to keep my foot on the brake and with the e-brake on, cycle from park to reverse to neutral to drive and then back up to park just so it cycles through the different positions one more time with the hot fluid right before we check our fluid level at our leveling port. We're going to be looking at our CV axle area on the driver's wheel for our level ports. They're going to look different depending on what engine and year you have. So you're either looking for an Allen key or a Torx key or a hex head. Now that we know where to look, there are two different means of getting to your level port. The first method is by using jack stands to lift up the vehicle. We recommend it if this is your first time. Pros are that it's safer to crawl under and you have better access and better control of removing or installing the level port plug. Cons are that you're closer to the hot engine when you're underneath the car and it is a bit of setup time. Method two is by removing the driver's front wheel while the vehicle is resting on the ground. The pros are that it's faster if you know what you're doing and you're further from contacting the hot engine while it's running. The cons are that you have a longer physical reach to the port, which means potentially diminished control when removing or reinstalling the plug. Whichever method you prefer for checking your fluid level, have your car in park, the engine on, a drip tray in place, and then remove your plug. It's very important that you're gentle when reinstalling this level plug. It takes very little torque. An M10 plug is 5.6 foot-pounds and an M20 is 26 foot-pounds. It's very light. If anything's damaged, check out the video link above. So let's start with method one by using jack stands. All right, so we're back under the vehicle and just for some orientation here, um, here's our drain plug from before. That is the back of the car. This is the front. Um, this is actually pointing towards the driver's wheel. That component there is your CV axle coming out. And right next to that is going to be your level plug. Mine is right here. I have the 1.6 liter engine. If you have the 2.5 or the 2 liter, you may have a different location, but it's either going to be in front or behind the CV axle. So you're either going to be looking for a Torx head or you're going to be looking for a hex bolt head. Those are the two different styles that you typically see. Go ahead and start your engine and place a catch pan underneath. So while the engine is running, take your T30 Torx driver or 10 millimeter Allen key and go up to your level plug. Break it loose and remove it. Fluid will begin to come out. Over time, it will cling to the underside of the transmission and come to a drip. Once it reaches a very steady but weak drip, it means that your fluid level is at the right height, which is at the very bottom edge of that level port. So now we're going to reinstall our plug. I prefer by hand so that you can feel it and feel the threads engaged, specifically because I had damaged these threads in the past, so I like to be careful. And then once it's in place, take your T30 Torx or 10 millimeter Allen key and tighten it down. Wipe up any excess drips. Wait and take a look and see if there's any fluid pooling up at the bottom of the plug or dripping down. If there's no fluid there, you're good to go. Now let's go with method two, which is removing the front wheel to access the port. Just like you would with a flat tire, we're going to break these lug nuts free, put the jack underneath, pull the wheel, and we'll have access to our level ports. Now we're going to use a tape measure to record the level height of the vehicle, reference to the ground. Um, it's just rough, but it's about 16 inches from the ground to this trim line right here. So when we pull the wheel off, raise the car back up to where it's at 16 inches, and then we can go from there. All right, so having just used the factory jack that came with the car, placed right on the pinch weld where the arrow shows behind the front driver's tire, um, we have the tire lifted off the ground. Since the lug nuts are broken loose, we're now going to remove the rest of the lug nuts and pull the wheel. Alright, so we now have the front driver's wheel removed. And looking in and right in front of the CV axle is a T30 plug. That is the 
level check plug for my transmission on my 1.6 liter 2013 Escape. But this is really what you're going to be looking for. So now that we have the wheel off, we are going to go back and make sure that our ride is at level riding height. So I'm currently at 21 inches here. I need to go back down to 16. Okay, so now we are at 16 inches with this trim line, suggesting that the vehicle is at level riding height. So I now have my drain pan right underneath, and we're going to start the car and unscrew that. Hop in your car and turn the keys and start your engine. Now that your engine's running, use your T30 Torx driver or 10 millimeter Allen key to remove your level plug. Be careful when removing it to not damage the threads. Fluid will begin to pour out. This is the excess that we put in during our refill. As it slows, it will cling to the bottom of the transmission and possibly make a little bit of a mess, so make sure you have a wide drain pan. When it slows to a drip, just like this here, it's now okay to reinsert your plug. Be careful when reinserting and make sure that it's straight and that you do not over tighten it. Right, now we just want that hand tight and all cleaned off. It is very hot in there, so be careful. That is it for our transmission fluid level check. Now we're going to put our wheel back on and put our splash shield back on and you're all done. Turn your engine off, reinstall your shield, and use a car jack as needed to get your wheel back on. Alright guys, that basically sums up the procedure for the automatic transmission fluid drain and fill on our 2013 and up Ford Escapes. If you have any other questions or comments, things that you may have done if you've done this before that I did not, share below in the comments section. Amazon links are below for materials and tools that we used. And if you thought this was helpful, please like it, please share it, and subscribe to our channel for more things to come. Something else that's pretty cool in the future coming up, we are working on a How to Escape app, which will keep all the videos and content um, in one place. You don't even have to search for it. Pretty excited about that. We're going to be looking for beta testers, so if you're interested in that as well, give a shout in the comments below or find us on Facebook or Instagram. We're building a list of people who may want to be first-round testers, second-round testers. Um, that's going to be coming in the next few months, so be on the lookout. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you for supporting our channel, and we'll see you next time. Have a good night.